Okay guys, so check this out. I have created a store procedure using Snowpark and uh, I've executed our new store procedure here. And you can see we've created our new uh, store procedure function and uh, we are running it here. I created, it's called create temp and we've got a success back from our store procedure where we copied a whole table over and then selected from it. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to continue our exploration into Snowpark, and we're going to take a look at Snowpark store procedures where we can create uh, Python store procedures that execute in Snowflake instead of on your own computer, which makes uh, your processing so much nicer and you're able to use all kinds of different resources and things like that. Let's get to it. Interested in the files used in today's video? Make sure to check out my downloads page. The link is in the description. Okay, so today's video is pretty cool. Uh, thanks to everyone who has requested this uh, topic. It is uh, one that a lot of people have asked me. Um, and they've asked me, how can I create functions and, and procedures that execute only in Snowflake uh, in Python? And of course, we have uh, Snowpark uh, for Python, and we're going to use that today, and uh, it's going to help us to get all of our remote execution done using the resources on the server, and that's uh, very preferable for most cases. And so what I've done is I'm going to say from snowflake.snowpark uh, import session. Um, now, if you need to, go back to my earlier video to see how to get yourself set up for Snowpark. You need to have Python 3.8. That's the only version that's supported right now. Um, so you need to make sure that you've got some prerequisites set there. Um, and uh, I'm setting a session variable equal to none. Uh, and then I'm going to set up all these parameters here, the snow account, user, and snow pass. Those are all my own uh, variables that have my uh, credentials in them. Of course, you'll switch those out for yours, and then you'll set your warehouse and all that other kind of stuff. Now, this is definitely a topic that a lot of people have requested, and it's, and it's because people want to know how to execute Python in Snowflake, and, and that's really, really important. You can also do Java, I think, and, and, uh, and of course, the native language is JavaScript. Um, but of course, a lot of people like to use Python uh, just because it's, it's nice and easy to use, and there's lots of tools, and, uh, and so it allow, this allows us in, to use Snowpark to execute our Python store procedures. Now you should be aware that the version of Python that's available in Snowpark is usually one version behind, and right now it is uh, uh, 3.8 as well. Uh, so you need 3.8 in order to get Snowpark installed for your uh, local computer, but then for remote your remote uh, Python, you should be aware that you're coding for 3.8 at least at the current time. And uh, so what I'm going to do to start here, I'm going to do a try accept um, finally block because I'm going to um, catch exceptions if we get one. And, and to get started, I'm just going to set that session variable, uh, the all important session, uh, which is super important for uh, Snowpark because it allows you to do all kinds of stuff like look at tables or run SQL or, or whatever. Um, that's what we're going to use that uh, connection parameters for up above. But if, if we get some kind of error, we want to make sure that we show the error. I'm not really doing much with it there. I'm just going to print it out. But I want to make sure that if that session variable is set, I'm going to close that session. Um, and, uh, and that's going to uh, release our, our uh, resources there. So there's our session variable. We're using session builder with the configuration set to connection parameters. We're going to use that create method, and that's going to do everything we need in one shot to get our, our uh, connection to Snowflake set up. So I'm just going to run that to see if I can get through here. And it looks like it worked just fine for, for uh, my Snowflake instance. Um, so we, we are good to go. And what I'll do first is I'm just going to 
get a Snowpark data frame. This is not a Pandas data frame or some other kind of data frame. This is a Snowpark data frame. And you can get that by uh, using your session variable and just specifying a table name if you want. You can put dot limit on there as well if you only want to get a certain number of records. Uh, in my case, my table has very few records, so I'm just going to grab that whole table. Um, and that's kind of like your session uh, reference to that table and then you can select from it you can uh, I'll do a you know my data frame for name here and I'll grab the name column and I'm going to use that collect uh, method to to get whatever is in that column and in this case it's only a few rows um, so I can just sort of loop through through those rows and uh, I'll just uh, do for row and DF name here um, going to get that name, uh, project name from the project table. This is going to be the table we're going to copy and I'll just hit F5 here um, just to, to see what we get and uh, it's connecting and there we go. We've, we've got our data frame back. There's our kale farm, our blueberry farm, our skyscraper project and, and other kinds of stuff. So those are the rows that are in that table and what we want to do today is we're going to build a stored procedure that will copy this table into a temp table and that's like a simple thing that you might do in a store procedure um, I'm not doing anything extensive today um, I'm sure you guys have lots of things that you can do once you understand the mechanics of how to create and execute a store procedure in Snowpark and so the first thing that we'll do here is I'm going to create an SQL variable um, and I'll, I'll say create or replace procedure um, and uh, we're going to create uh, a procedure called create underscore temp and then we'll have an argument where we can pass in the name of the table that we want to create a temp table for. Now I should note that you can type this part of it into the uh, IDE for Snowflake that you get in your browser and uh, when you do that you do not need the backslash n that you see that I'm putting in here. I'm only putting those in because we're creating uh, a store procedure and we're passing in a string variable for that in using Python and so I want my Python to have the line breaks in it. If you type this into the you know the Snowflake uh, SQL editor uh, you do not need to have those uh, backslash n on the end. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, returns a string, a language is Python. If you're using Java, I think you can use Java there. Uh, runtime version is 3.8. And then these packages, uh, package that we're going to get here is the Snowflake Snowpark Python package. And that's going to allow us to use uh, the session variable and all that other kind of good stuff that we are actually using from our desktop today. So be aware of that. Um, your store procedure will also use the session variable um, and, and other kinds of uh, good stuff. And the handler uh, we're going to put in here, we're going to call it run and then, uh, and then that's going to be the name of the, uh, of the uh, Python function that we're going to execute in, in our uh, Python uh, store procedure. So the this sort of uh, trigger, the trigger function is going to be called run and we can go ahead and start uh, building that now. Now you'll see the actual Python code starts and ends with the two dollar signs uh, that you see there. Um, so anything in between the, the two dollar signs is going to be your, your Python code and we're going to create a Python function called run and uh, we're going to use uh, the session uh, variable uh, which is kind of like a reserved variable here and then the from table which is uh, which is going to be passed into the procedure using SQL um, and our Python function will receive that from table uh, uh, argument and so we'll say uh, we're going to auto create our two table name uh, we'll call that um, you know, the table name underscore temp uh, in the to underscore table um, variable and then we'll do a session dot table uh, from table 
uh, dot write dot save as table to to table <laughs> and so that's going to write the the source table to the destination um, it's a very simple command it's in python it's using our session variable that we've uh, uh, received there and then we'll return success if if it writes the table successfully and then just as i mentioned before we'll close off our python code with the two dollar signs uh, and our uh, semicolon to complete that statement, the create or replace uh, procedure statement. And that is going to create our store procedure. And how can we execute that? Well, we can just say result equals session.sql and put the SQL in there. And that is how nice and easy it is to work with the session object. You can see I can just put the SQL in there, get the result, and then I can use result.show because that is the method for Snowpark data frames uh, to show what we've got there. So then we can give a little bit of feedback saying procedure created into the idle window um, to show that our uh, procedure got created. And then we're going to call our procedure right after that's been done. Uh, so I'll create an SQL under underscore call. Um, variable and I'll, I'll put in there I'll say call create temp which is the procedure that we just created and I'm gonna choose the project table uh, this time to uh, to create a project underscore temp table which is a copy of the project table um, so then we can do the same thing we can say result equals session dot SQL and then our call SQL SQL call and then we can show that um, and then that's going to uh, give us uh, the feedback on whether or not the store procedure executed correctly. And then we can give some feedback again into the idle window saying procedure called. Um, and then we'll, we'll sort of get that uh, information. Once we're done there, if it did execute correctly, uh, then uh, we should be able to select from our table that we just created. Um, so I'll say uh, data frame new is equal to session uh, dot table and project temp is the name of the new table that we created. And then we should be able to get the, uh, the field, the same field name. It was called uh, project name. So yeah, we'll get our uh, data frame name new um, equals uh, data frame new uh, dot select and then we'll select the uh, project name field from there uh, to take a look at and we'll use that collect function just like we did uh, up above there the collect method and uh, and then we can do the same thing we'll just loop through our results there and we'll give some output to the idle window and that should just about do it. If I take a look here, make sure I don't have any spelling errors in here, I hope. Um, so this is our store procedure um, that we are going to create using this command here. We'll show the results of, of that. And then we're going to call that store procedure using uh, the call statement. And we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll execute SQL using the session object and then we can uh, show the results of that and then we'll go ahead and select from the new table that was created when our store procedure was executed um, and then we'll loop through that and give uh, output into the console for that um, so I think we're looking pretty good I think I can hit F5 here hopefully we don't get any errors on this so there we go, uh, it's executing. That was our initial run through of the source table. Uh, the function was created successfully and then we executed it with a success it looks like, there we go. So there's our status. Uh, our function create temp was successfully created uh, and then create temp uh, was executed and it returned success. Uh, that was the return uh, uh, the return value that we put in there and then here is the output that happened and all of the values from the new temp table that was created from our store procedure and we closed our connection and 
That is how you can do a Python store procedure in Snowpark. Want to help support my work? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. <laughs>